Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mining and Max. Uh, today we're revisiting the Clutch by uh, Signature Tips, Mike Vapes, and Davpo. Uh, I, this isn't to preempt anything that these guys may want to do. In fact, uh, Mike Vapes just put out a uh, battery rattle adjustment tutorial uh, on his channel. This is just uh, some of the things that I bumped into during testing of the clutch and uh, since I do like the mod I wanted to pass on the community in terms of uh, uh, performance tweaks and maintenance and things like that. Uh, the first thing I want to go to Mike Vape shows you a way to adjust this. Now some people may want to try to put something maybe underneath the bottom contact or so but the problem is when you do that it's already down at the bottom at least for me and this is just the Samsung 30T so it's really I don't think going to be any benefit to try to put something rubber underneath to keep this from bending too far next thing is putting the battery in and out now for me at least with this Goon 1.5 you can see that the pin sticks into the main compartment which it should because that's how it contacts the battery problem is if you just try to slide the battery in, if you can't push down low enough below and you slide the battery in, you can tear the raft, which is what I did. Uh, it can catch on the edge of the 510 pin. So I recommend, and, and so does Mike, back this off halfway. Not sure if I can get it in. Okay. And throw it in. Don't, for when you're putting it in, don't try to come in hard at an angle. Just put it in straighten it out and push it in because if you come up at an angle you're raising up this side that goes in if you're coming in hard like this like an angle and you see where I uh, tore it uh, so be careful put it in more or less straight just push down take the time to push down at the bottom go in and then bring this down so the 510 pin touches the battery and then before you take the battery out back it off and just push it straight out. Now for some of the performance tweaks that you can do, uh, I saw about a 4, 4 4.4 watt uh, voltage drop on this and you can take out, pull out this little strip, pull out the contact, right along here where it bumps up against the top brass plate, I was able to drop that 4.4 watt voltage drop that's through the entire mech down to 3.5 watts, about a 20% uh, reduction in the voltage drop just by polishing this with a Scotch-Brite heavy-duty scrubber pad. Now I, I don't recommend sandpaper or anything like that, maybe ultra-fine emery cloth or something just because you're going to start to reshape the contact. We don't want to do that. We just want to lower the high spots. You can also then smooth down the contact up here and part of the maintenance that you're going to be doing let me take out the button is eventually there was almost no arcing after 200 button presses across here and essentially no arcing on the copper plate where this contact presses up against it when you hit the button but eventually you're going to have to remove this to do maintenance now there's two screws up here tiny ones and you can use I recommend a uh, double zero size you could use a zero uh, but it's uh, for me it was just a little bit big I like double zero I like the the Weha's or Viha Viha not sure it's German it's red they're really good and let's take a peek here because there's something signature chips had to show me now these are very tiny screws so I recommend I keep you can certainly have a little container but I put a magnet inside that will hold the screws for me because once you drop it you are in trouble and that'll just hold <laughs> as it attaches to everything now if you do happen to drop the screws which guess what I did flung it across the room is you can do something like what I did to find it get a flashlight and just sweep it across the floor with the rest of the lights off and you'll see anything that sticks up off the floor and it only took me a minute to find the screw uh, scanning across a, a wooden floor and let's go down to the other screw
And then in order to get this separated from this, to put your atomizer in, and this is the one that Shake showed me, just pull up and out and you'll separate the three pieces. Now the only thing that carries the current, this is the peak insulator that keeps the battery from touching the contact, and then this would sit here. Now all the current, this ring right here, might touch this brass plate, but otherwise all the current passing through the 510 is only passed through these two screws down into the brass plate. So keeping these screws clean is really important. So if you ever do any kind of maintenance, take it out. Just give these a careful, good cleaning of the threads. You really can't get inside here to clean the threads. Um, keep this clean, but of course, keep the uh, main 510 threads clean themselves uh, along in here as deep as you can. You want to keep those clean. Now, this part here, which is what the silver contact bumps up against, you can take that. I don't recommend, again, filing it. Uh, you can just go down onto a scotch Bright pad and do this just to take down some high spots that might be on it. It's solid brass, the contact, silver contact, and this brass plate are not plated, so you don't have to worry about uh, screwing up plating or anything like that. You can just smooth out this. A lot tougher to do because of the corners on this, but you can smooth out the uh, contact and try to get a little bit of uh, power back that's lost inside the mod. And then the sled itself, you don't have to do any kind of maintenance or something, you know, unless, you, unless it gets filthy inside there with juice or something like that, you can take it out and, and clean things. That's the lock that's back there, that brilliant lock on there. And when putting this back in, what's really critical is how, where is the plate, is how this touches this. So this is easily bent. So if it gets torqued or twisted in any way, you're going to be touching the plate like this at an angle. You want it to touch flat across. So after you reassemble, check the alignment. You know, look inside and see how this is hitting. You want as much as the uh, surface area, this contact, to touch this plate. If it's only one corner, I'm exaggerating the twist that you'd put into it, then that's just going to be a higher resistance connection and you're going to get more power losses. Another thing to check too is the bottom. If you're reshaping this, you're bending it, or you're doing something like that, what can happen is when the battery goes in, you want to make sure that the contact here is flat against the battery. If the contact's sitting like this against the bottom of the battery, then there's only one little point on here, only like this edge. Can I actually get a lot closer here? Maybe not. Only one edge might touch the battery. You want the whole flat to touch the battery if you can. So when the battery's in, you want to hopefully see that this contact is flat up against the battery and the contact is not tilted one way or the other. I forgot to mention in the video when reassembling the mod and up at the top with the 510 connected, those two screws, do not over tighten them. They are tiny. Just go snug, a little past snug. Use your best judgment, but it's going into a brass plate and the threads are tiny and it's very easy to strip the threads. And that is everything that I have for you for maintaining the clutch and the couple of performance tweaks that you can do to it. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.